Hi Taurus, Sun, Moon, and Ascendant. This is Dane, and I'm going to be doing your Mercury Retrograde reading for you beginning December 13th, 2023. And I ask if this reading resonates with you, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It helps me out tremendously to get seen by the YouTube algorithm, so thank you so much for doing so. So let's see what the tarot has to say. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Ooh, this is really good. <laughs> Guide this reading and show me clearly. Okay, so here we go. As I as I become quiet, <laughs> here we go, and then I and then I listen to spirit. All right, so we are crowned by the chariot, and the chariot energy is also cancer energy. So if we have cancer in our chart, that comes through very strongly during this time, as well as if we have gemini energy in our chart or we're born on the cusp of gemini we ourselves are coming through very strongly here hierophant energy taurus energy coming in we then have the king of pentacles also representative of us coming through taurus we are represented by the hierophant in the major arcana by the by the pentacles in the minor arcana so that's absolutely beautiful this is a very powerful time for us even though i can just hear you saying it's mercury retrograde it's going to be bad it's not going to be bad really it a mercury retrograde brings to the surface what we have been repressing within ourselves it can bring haywire craziness around communication and tech and travel yes most definitely but this mercury retrograde is really interesting it's also balanced by the fact that mercury conjunct the dwarf planet quarar I, I hope i'm saying that correctly i did listen to it <laughs> that's that's how i saw it but i heard it so here quarar is <laughs> Korra is a creation god, all right? And Korra brings order out of chaos. And what we're going to see is that a lot of order comes out of chaos surrounding Mercury during this time. And that is a very interesting alignment to be walking into because that's what the new moon on the 12th, this, this Mercury retrograde begins on the 13th. We've been in the pre-shadow period for three weeks before Mercury retrograde, you know, comes into into its its power, one might say. So we've been in the pre-shadow period since the 25th of November. And this pre-shadow period was in Sagittarius. So from the 25th of November, Mercury was in Sagittarius up until the 1st of December. And I don't know, it was very interesting because when looking at all of this, I was like, oh my gosh, things make so much more sense because I've seen it like, in the beginning of December and in November, it was much more of a place where like optimism ruled and dreams felt achievable. And then come the 1st of December, there was like a practical wall that slammed down. I felt it distinctly. I don't know if you did too. Let me know in the comment box if you did. But from the 1st of December to the 23rd of December, we are going to see that Mercury is in Capricorn. And so it makes us a heck of a lot more practical. It makes us a heck of a lot more like grounded. So just be mindful about this. And then from the 24th of December to the 1st of January, we then have again, Mercury in Sagittarius. So we're going back and forth from this real optimism, dreaming, you know, seeking to achieve space, looking for truth and embracing imagination to practicality, you know, structure, rules, top down, it has to work this certain way. Like, why are you trying to go outside of the norm? Can, can be a very big feeling during this time. And what's interesting is that we're taking the reins. We're taking the reins to what we want. We're looking at things. We're reining things in emotionally here, Taurus. That is super important to us. We're looking at, okay, where do I need to be? What do I desire for myself? How am I opening up the door? What am I looking for? And that's going to be a game changer for us. There is a sense here also where I'm not letting emotions run amok. So that's also going to be very empowering for us to really sit there and say, okay, I'm reining it in. What do I need? What do I want? What's important to me? We can be getting, you know, bare bones at this time, really saying emotionally, what do I need in order to achieve? And what else is just chaos that is weighing me down? So being very open with this energy, being very honest with ourselves is going to be almost transcendent during this time. It really is. Stepping into the King of Pentacles energy, there is a real sense of determination, of focus, of insight. Now, we could say here, Taurus, that we would align more with Mercury being in Capricorn because Capricorn is also an Earth sign energy. And that can be the case. We can feel much more comfortable than some signs in yeah, when Mercury is in is in Capricorn, I was gonna say inert side energy, but when Mercury is in Capricorn, 
But we also miss the dreaming achieving that Sagittarius brings. So just be mindful about this during this time. We're really looking at how am I planting, you know, what I want to, how am I planting what I want to build? How am I looking at how I want to succeed? How am I opening the door to what's next? And that's going to be a very big thing during this time. What's next? What's next? What's, what's next? We can be very worried about it, very concerned about it. So just be mindful about this as well. Now, what's interesting here is that Mercury retrograde energy and the new moon energy, they come together, right? And we saw how that works with Mercury conjunct the dwarf planet, Quora, and we can see ourselves stepping into power during this time. So let's see what spirit has to say. And if you are interested in entering to win a free reading, put a snowman in the comment box below. This, this giveaway will be going till the, what is it? Till the 1st of January, where the winner will be announced in a separate video and only through a separate video. So don't be scammed by anybody pretending to be me. They're not going to be me. And if you're interested in purchasing a reading, check out my website, daneharttarot.com. It's linked in the description box below. So we have Luminous right here. Spirit is saying, let yourself shine. There is going to be a drive during this, during this Mercury retrograde to how do I shine? How do I step into myself? How do I break down the barriers and really embrace what I want, who I am, and where I need to be? Letting ourselves shine is going to be something that's, it's going to be difficult because it's not going to be that shining like the sun. It's going to be with Luminous, this is a lunar moth, it's going to be as the reflective light of the sun. It's going to be quieter. And that's how we want to shine, that quiet steadiness, that beautiful luminosity of being. It's not going to be that blinding light of the sun. It's something gentler, but it's something longer lasting. So just be aware of this. I'm seeing like, it's interesting because I'm seeing like a, a moonstone or, or an opal just reflecting the light, like just having that luminosity to it. So I don't know if somebody has a ring on or a piece of jewelry or, you know, just a stone somewhere that very much has that luminous light to it. So, yeah, and I just see, I also see somebody playing, like just holding either a worry stone or something like that and it being something that you just roll through your fingertips. So, yeah, it's just coming through. So let's see what our chakra energy is. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly guide this reading and show me clearly angels Ooh. so we have here two we have psychic development and we have life purpose reverse psychic development is the opening of our third eye chakra so for those of us who are psychic who are empathic who are you know more sensitive people or what is it called a highly sensitive person there we go we can be feeling things really intensely and we can see that there's an opening coming there's a sense of our intuition guiding us, a sense of deeper understanding leading us forward. But there is also a sense of, am I, am I moving into my life purpose? Am I speaking what I desire? Am I opening up the door to where I need to be? And that's going to be very much a game changer for us. If we can align our third eye chakra and our throat chakra and really start to visualize, really start to embrace our, our psychicness, okay? Or, you know, sixth sense-ness, however you want to say it, or connection with divinity to our life purpose and, and give voice to it. We're going to see ourselves empowered. We're going to see ourselves elevating to kind of the next level, very much like leveling up in a video game. Or when you learn a new skill and you go from being a beginner to being an adventurous beginner and then being a, a more intermediate, more kind of like, okay, I know the ropes of things better. Let's see what energy we need to be mindful of during this time. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly guide this reading and show me clearly angels. So here's the queen of wands. This is fire sign energy, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. This is energy that can be very overwhelming. Okay. It can be within our own chart. If we have fire sign energy within our chart, but it can be that we have a bit of a temper during this time as well. Things move qu quickly. You know, Mercury is one of the fastest or the fastest moving planet and it moves so quickly and it controls communication and travel and and tech so things that are a part of our day-to-day -day life right we're always going somewhere even if it's just you know to the toilet you know or to the bathroom do apologize you know there there is a sense here of we're always heading somewhere so be mindful during this time that our passion our determination our fire our focus comes through quite strongly and also we can be picking up on the angry energy of others very easily. Like any type of disturbance, I mean, we do have that psychic development going, any type of frustration that they have 
we can be internalizing. So do be mindful about this as well. Now here, what we're going to see is that there's also something hidden here around a fire sign energy, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. Now it can be that they're trying to hold back their temper, but it can be that there's also outbursts with things or secrets around, like you're not going to know the, the full story of something. So just be aware of that during this time. I don't know why that's coming through. The hidden cat comes through very powerfully in this card. I don't know if you can see that from back there, but that cat under the chair, which is coming through. So I don't know if somebody has a cat that hides and spirits like, oh, it's that person. Or if there's just a sense of them being a little bit secretive, like a cat, like kind of like, I'm going to keep my secrets to myself. You really don't need to know them. Mercury retrogrades can be messy. Okay. Again, seriously, they move so quickly. They affect us so deeply. But what we're going to see is that we're entering into 2024. We're entering into the new year with this Mercury retrograde that's bringing out a lot of the muck in the mire that we didn't think was polite to say, or we didn't think we could say. So here with the chariot, as we take in the reins, we're saying, okay, where do I need to be? What do I desire? What do I want? What's, it, what's appropriate for me? What isn't appropriate for me? What, what does my heart need in order to move forward? And it brings us again to that king of pentacles energy, which is our prosperity. It is our success. It is our determination. It is our focus. It is our insight. And it is really the sense of I am planting seeds to grow and expand my future. I am planting seeds to, to achieve more than kind of what I thought I could. This Mercury retrograde is going to have us speaking very optimistically with to ourselves. And we'll see that usually around the time period where Mercury is in is in Sagittarius. But then we go to that practical side and we can be kind of wanting to talk ourselves out of our dreams and what we deeply desire. But what's going to be interesting here is that Spirit is saying to us, we're going to be seeing our practicality and our dreams merging together. And we're going to be trying to make things work in ways that we had been too overwhelmed or scared or doubtful to see how they worked before. So again, that's the planting of the seeds, the nurturing, the being able to harvest what it is that we desire. And this brings us to the lovers. We're going to be looking at things and, and kind of falling in love with our life again, falling in love with what we desire from life and looking at where we need to be. There is also a sense here of what is important to me. We're looking at the two sides of ourselves, very much that dual energy of Gemini coming forward. We're looking at the duality of what I want, of how I'm growing, of how I'm succeeding, of how I'm moving forward. And there's a sense here of there's more than meets the eye. There is more than meets the eye keeps on coming forward. And there is more to what I want than what I had originally thought. So when the lovers comes in, it's what am I falling in love with? Or what am I in love with in my life? How do I open up the door? What's powerful for me? What's purposeful for me? Where do I need to be? And it brings us to this place with the two of pentacles. So we have the lovers, which is the duality of ourselves coming forward, right? The sacred feminine and the sacred masculine falling in love with, you know, externally falling in love with somebody, but also falling in love with our lives, our souls, our existence, ourselves. And then we have the two of pentacles reversed. And the two of pentacles reversed is very much this energy of, I cannot balance it all, right? So something, something's something got to give. And we're going to see certain things falling away that aren't important. And there might be this sense of, I don't want to pick that up again. And that's perfectly legit. So do be mindful about that. I don't want to pick that up again. I don't want to have to balance everything and just simply sacrifice myself. So being mindful of this during this time is going to be very important. It then moves us to the power of us. It moves us to the Hierophant. And what we're going to see here is that we are learning how to embrace where we need to be for ourselves. We are looking at the bigger picture of what we desire and what we want. The Hierophant is kind of that top-down structure, but it is also the sense, it can fit into the top-down structure, but it's also a sense of improvement. It is a sense of optimism. It is a sense of, well, how can I make this work for me? The Hierophant in the Rider Waite Smith deck is, is the Pope, but here, there is a sense of how does everything come together, right? I always see the, the Hierophant as that huge change in, in human technology where we had the wheel, right? Human beings had invented the wheel, but we had invented it out of stone, which this just boggles my mind. I never even thought that, you know, it could take thousands of years for us to say, oh, well, we, had a, a, we have the wheel out of stone, but did you know you could make it out of wood? And it took us such a long time as a species to say, look at this, you can make it out of wood. And then that revolutionized everything. And I see that as the Hierophant. The Hierophant is the sense of, 
I'm going to take the structure that's already there. I'm going to take what already exists, but I'm going to improve it in a way that kind of blows people's minds and has them look at things as, and be like, oh, wow, you could do that. Oh, wow, it could be like that. And that's how we're going to see ourselves coming together with certain ideas, coming together and, and standing into our power and embracing where we want to stand. It's not that we have to carve out our own spot for ourselves. You know, somebody kind of already thought of it, but we're going to revolutionize that. It doesn't have to be in a big way that anybody else sees, but it is in a way that improves our quality of life that has us standing in our power, in our determination, in our focus more than we have before. And it brings us to the place with the three of swords, which is very interesting because it's almost like now I'm reclaiming me. With the three of swords, this is heartbreak and pain and disappointment and anger and upset. And these are the things that have wounded us. And spirit's like, you know what? That's great. <laughs> and I don't mean that to sound flippant, though just hearing that, it does sound flippant. But spirit is excited that we have wounds in life because it's, and I'm not talking about horrific things. What I'm talking about here is that spirit tends to think that we as human beings would stay in just like the blah, like just like in the mediocrity of things, unless we are pushed. And sometimes I agree and sometimes I disagree with this idea. But here, it's looking at the hurts and the pains, pains that have defined us. And they have defined us for so long. It's kind of like, you know, when you talk to somebody who's divorced and they're, they'll, they'll bring up their divorce with their ex or, you know, being fired from a job or a failure of dreams. And it's like, that's what defines them, that, that heartbreak, that pain, that disappointment. And here it's looking at it and it's saying, you know what? And excuse my language, but like shit happens. And I'm not letting that moment of devastation define the rest of my existence. And so we're looking at the three of swords now and we're saying, okay, I see it. I see that hurt. I see that pain. I see that disappointment and I see that I lived in that for a really long time. And now I'm done. It's not that it won't creep back up on us, but I'm done being defined by it. And I'm done having it be so important to me that people know that pain first and foremost. So it's almost like I'm building a shield against myself. I'm giving you everything. I'm putting it all on the table so I can't be hurt. And here, this is, this is very empowering to sit there and say, I see, I see the scars. I see the hurt. I see the pain. Or I see the wounds and now I'm taking out the swords and the, and the scars get to come. But I've earned those scars. They're my battle wounds. And, you know, when people ran into battle, when, you know, Vikings came and, and ran into battle and, and caused terror, they honored their scars. Now, am I saying to live like a Viking? Absolutely not. No, scary. But here, it's like, honor our scars. We in our world today, we want everything to be perfect, everything to be beautiful everything to be, you know, Instagram ready or whatever it is that people, people do, because I don't know. But it's messy and it's real. And we're coming to an acceptance of that. I'm a really good story. And a really good story isn't everything is always happy all the time and just always easy. It's, it's messy and it's intense. And we're honoring that within ourselves. And it brings us then to going deeper, to looking at our subconscious Spirit message, it's nature, embrace your nature. Also get out in nature, touch earth, connect, connect with spirit that way. But it's also saying, this is my nature. This is myself. You know, you cannot change who you innately are. As long as you come from a place of love and connection and, 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 and kindness, you're golden. You know, it might be a hard journey. It, it most definitely will be, but keep on being you. You're not hurting anyone, right? You, you are coming from a place of love. And keep that coming forward. Place of kindness, of love. Keep believing in you. It brings us then to our subconscious chakra message, which is divine wisdom. And this is the soul star chakra located six inches above the crown. We're going to have wisdom pouring down on us, inspiration, deeper understanding. And here it's like embrace that divine wisdom. Embrace that knowledge that is coming to us. Our subconscious energy to be mindful of is the four of cups. We can get stuck in a certain way of seeing things. It's going to be like this and I'm going to make it work this way. And spirit is tapping our shoulder, not very lightly right now and saying, hey, listen, look over here. Look at this, connect with this. This is big. So being aware of this during this time that there is something that we're kind of obsessing over. It has to look just this way. It has to look just this way. Spirit is breaking us of that pattern. And it's going to be by really annoying us, really taking us out of the direction we think we should be going and looking at something so differently and, and being somewhere so differently where it's like, oh my gosh, are you kidding me? 
So just be aware of this during this time because we're going to be so angry at it or so annoyed by it. And then it's going to be so powerful. Our subconscious tarot message is the wheel of fortune reversed. So we're entering into a new year, right? This is the wheel of the year. And here, it almost feels like it's not changing, right? We're entering into the new year. We're leaving behind right on the 1st of of January, we enter out of Mercury going retrograde. Yes, we enter into a, a three week period of the post retrograde period, but you know, we're entering into a new way of seeing things. We've, we've come to a realization about a lot of things because of Mercury retrograde that we've repressed, that we've held back, that we've buried down, that we're saying no. And that's really where the Three of Swords comes in, where it's like, no, I'm not being held back by this anymore. I'm freeing myself. And we're going to think, okay, big change now, big, huge, unbelievable change. And it kind of feels the same. Subconsciously, we're like, well, this feels the same. This feels like it was before. So just be mindful about this during this time where there's the sense of, but I thought it was going to be big. Like it feels like it should be big, but it's small, right? It's not that that cosmic earth shaking change that I thought it was going to be. It doesn't mean that it's not there. So do be mindful. We're going to want, especially subconsciously, we're going to be thinking, oh, I'm going to see something huge. This is going to be much more subtle, much more kind of calm, mainstream like low level and it will turn into something bigger and bigger so just be aware of this during this time all right <sighs> all right taurus i hope this reading has resonated with you i wish you nothing but light love peace and happiness may harmony always be with you i am sending loving healing energy to each and every one of you i love you all and stay safe let's end this reading with a meditation a clearing away of negative energy a raising of our positive energy as we embrace the power, intensity, and beauty of this time and of ourselves. And this meditation will be accompanied by a loud sound. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. May you move forward in peace and in harmony, Taurus. May blessings and prosperity always be with you. I love you all. God bless. And have a blessed Mercury retrograde and happy holidays. Bye.